Well, here we are in Texas and once again looking at a Toyota Tundra, except it's a Toyota Tundra minus the body. We are also here with uh, Jay Sackett again, as well as Craig Herring, and they're gonna help us talk through this third generation truck. Jay, we talked before about the fully boxed frame and uh, I'll put a link up to that video right now, but here is just a much better view of this fully boxed frame we have here. Yep, and as you can see, the uh, with our fully boxed frame, the one thing that's really impressive what our engineering staff have done, our manufacturing staff now, is we no longer have any uh, true overlap section on section. This is truly one thickness as we go through, if we were to cut a section through here. And that's all four corners underneath as well? Yep, yep, correct. The only time place you may find some double lap is when you get the sections welded together. I see, I see. And the really impressive uh, uh, laser welded blanks that we're using um, are what we call non-linear uh, laser blanks. Okay. So typically you have a straight piece of sheet metal and you butt it up against another straight piece of sheet metal and weld together to make your blank. That when you fold it and bend it, you're going to have wasted material in some locations. So with this new process we have, you can have to get really close, but you may be able to see some uh, seam around on the frame itself. So this is actually a higher strength, thicker material ah. that's cut into the base material and, and welded together, laser welded together. Got it. So we put our, our put our mask, put our material where it needs to be for the customer and for the performance of the frame. Got it. Now, since we're back here, um, let's take another look at this um, multi-link, but still rigid axle rear suspension. Um, now this particular chassis is equipped with the rear air spring. So those are those are air springs there, Correct. not there, but it's coil springs otherwise. Yes. And one thing that I want to make clear this time around is we have frame rails, we have the shock absorbers outside of the frame rails, Correct. and then the springs are just inside the frame Correct. rails. We moved our dampers outside the frame rail to uh, give a, a better stability and also better efficiency for our uh, dampers on this program. We kept the, uh, the coils just inside and you can see mounted strongly within the frame provide the, the spring force that's necessary for towing and, and payloads. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the multi-links, they're nice and easy to see here in blue. So we have our standard pig axle going along, but then we also have a panard bar going across yep, here. Right here. And then we also have some uh, trailing links inside is here, and uh, an arc. lower link down here, yep. and then a nice big anti-roll bar as well. Right. What are the benefits of the individual components? Uh, the, the trailing arms are fairly self-explanatory, but uh, maybe the pan hard bar and the um, inner upper trailing arms, you can uh, explain a little bit further. Yeah. The great thing about, about the pan hard and our, our trailing arms is now we're keeping our, our lateral rigidity across the truck. You know, as you're pulling high loads, you're gonna get some uh, input from the trailer hitch into the back of the vehicle to make it wanna go side to side. But now with this suspension, the pan hards and the trailing arms, really hold and lock the vehicle in a, into a stable configuration uh, as you're pulling high load and keeping it going straight down the road for the customer. Very really good. Give some confidence. And what what was the motivation behind ditching leaf, spring, leaf springs for coils? Our goal is to make a premium towing machine. So as we were looking at that, we wanted to improve the ride comfort. The leaf spring get a little bit of a, a jounce to it. And you can also get a, a little bit, a lot more of the side to side. Uh, choppiness. Going to the, the coil suspension and the multi-link suspension, we are able to smooth that out for the customer. So really the ride quality was the primary goal for the uh, coil spring suspension. Great. Uh, then I guess also as being a global platform, we're looking at this not only for a pickup truck, but we're also building our SUV. So this is the same as the Land Cruiser structure back here. Very good. Now, Craig, your expertise is a little bit more in the powertrain. And what we're looking at here is the hybrid powertrain. So it starts as the same twin turbocharged three and a half liter V6, but then in between the end here where the crankshaft is mounted and the beginning of the transmission, this is the motor, this is the hybrid unit right here. Is that correct? That's right. So it's a parallel hybrid system. We have this, this orange part here is sandwiched between the rear of the engine and the front of the traditional transmission and that holds the electric motor uh, and generator in there. Right, and then moving far beyond that, this is the transfer case. This particular chassis is all wheel drive. And then if we follow this orange down, this is the battery pack, which is 
one and a what, how many kilowatt hours? 1.87 kilowatt hours. 1.87 kilowatt hours. Now, is is there anything you guys can speak to about? Uh, will you be able to drive this in EV mode only? That's right. And is there a speed limit that, that you can achieve that? Sure, so yeah, you can drive in electric mode only, um, and that is all based on the driver's load inputs and requirements. Okay. So it's not a specific speed or a specific power, but it's based on the driver's input and where, how fast they're going on the vehicle um, allows it to coast uh, to drive an EV. Great. Now, the, the three and a half liter uh, turbo V6, that's 389 horsepower yep. and uh, 479 pound-feet of torque, yep. correct? Add the hybrid motor to it, and then what are your peak outputs now? We're at 583 foot-pounds okay. of torque and 437 horsepower. Now, those aren't the exact same peak outputs of the electric motor them itself, so it, it has to do with uh, the engine speed when it makes its peak power and the electric motor when it makes its peak power. That's correct. If you look at the torque curves of the electric motor and the gasoline engine, how they overlap uh, creates the, the peak numbers. So Jay, I'm going to ask you again, we have to make sure that we uh, understand this completely. That's a V6. Seems like there's room for a V8. Well, why, why, are, why is there not a V8 option? Looking at what our customer base is, uh, looks for, they're looking for power and torque to pull their vehicles. Also, from a company standpoint, we have to be looking forward thinking into where emissions testing, where fuel economy needs to be going. So with our current package, the V6 Turbo uh, ticks off those, those points for the customer, giving us torque and power and better fuel economy, and then also improves our uh, corporate citizenship as better emissions, better fuel economy uh, for our customer and our fleet. A lot of the comments I got on my previous video discussed yeah yeah but the loads of uh, a v6 wind towing they're just not gonna be able to handle it and when you think about loads what you're ultimately thinking about is like specific heat points mm -hmm. right can the can the engine control its temperatures oil temp trans temp not engine but oil temp water temp etc you guys have done a lot of testing i presume yes to manage heat so that it can in fact handle these things. Right, if you look up front, you can see all the uh, radiators that we have. This, um, only this is specifically just for the, the hybrid unit. This one right here yep. in orange. Yep, and we have multiple radiators pulling in and the, the cooling the overall uh, Incopa, the engine compartment. Yeah, sure, To sure. keep the uh, powertrain in That's slick like engineering stage. talk if right. you're curious. Right, to uh, keep the powertrain at the optimum temperatures. Um, we have a lot large airflow moving through to uh, cool the engine and cool the transmission. Um, well, obviously, I mean, this yep. is wide open. Yep, yep. To, uh, but you're saying even with the body on, there are a lot the of passages yep. to uh, allow cool, fresh air to get into these compartments and help keep everything at operating temperature. Correct, pull yeah. in the air intakes, pull it in the cool engine. Our goal is, as we're going up uh, summertime, up Eisenhower, up Davis Dam, up Breaker Grades, to make sure that we don't have any power cuts. You know, we want to be able to maintain that speed or accelerate up those grades. Um, so being able to pull the air through, keep the engine cool, uh, it really, really helps with that. And you're and you guys, you guys have tested this V6, and you're confident. Yeah. You're yeah, confident and, and that it, it stays cool. That's right. One other piece of hardware you can't see here is the headlight. The headlight actually has a little uh, intake hole in the center of it um, okay. that also helps with the cooling uh, of, our, of our intakes. Um, but uh, yeah, we've tested all around the country multiple times. Under heavy loads. Under heavy loads, maximum pay, uh, tow loads that we can. And, and we are we can guarantee the performance. The engine now has 50,000, 75,000 miles on it. As long as it's maintained, you guys, your confidence is equally strong. Very, very yeah. strong. Yeah. yeah. Now that I'm looking at a bare chassis, I noticed something painted in green here. That looks like an uh, electric power steering system. Uh, that's actually the electric motor for the front uh, spoiler. Oh. That's this not is, steering at all. No, nope, steering's back here. Okay. But this is, thanks, Greg. That's our uh, electric uh, powered front spoiler. Our engineers did a wonderful job designing that to drop it in certain conditions to improve airflow around the vehicle. Fascinating. And they also looked at uh, improving airflow around the vehicle when you're towing. Oh. So in a towing situation, you need to be able to manage the airflow around the truck and the trailer to give better performance and better stability and better fuel kind of. Wow. So we've got uh, algorithms in our controllers to 
uh, activate that spoiler to get better towing fuel economy with, wow. with the truck as well. Wow. So spoiler down for regular, just a plain vehicle is one thing, but once you start towing, it affects the airflow, so we are we able to retract and give better fuel economy for a towed vehicle. Well. Fascinating. Okay. Well, I'm very glad I asked. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for another look at the Toyota Tundra, this time bare chassis.